Rosa Cooney, this is Aisha Latree with Scars of Survival Magazine, Pain, Healing, and Endurance. How you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. You look beautiful as ever. Going. I can't wait to see you today. Um, so can you share with the audience who you are and where you're from? Yes, so uh, my name is Danny Canada. I am managing editor of Bossip.com and also a media personality, and I'm from Marietta, Georgia. All right, I love that. And that's AC, you were born and raised, correct? So not born, but raised. I was born in Pennsylvania, but I've been here since kindergarten, so this is home for sure. Georgia Peach, and it's fine. Georgia Peach, all the way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so what interesting, unique story that you'd like to share with us today? An interesting or unique story? Yes, ma'am. Um, let's see. Um, for me, um, I guess pertaining to my career, I always had a dream of not just working in media, but being like Oprah. Um, mm-hmm. So even as a child, I remember dressing up in elementary school as Oprah. You know, my mom gave me like a little microphone and I had like the hair and I was always just like, I'm Oprah. And so she's always just been like, my dream person to me to be like to emulate so yeah okay so for you and it's so funny that you say that your dream to emulate oprah um yeah. the next question was what are some of your dreams and goals besides emulating oprah <laughs> <laughs> um some of my dreams and goals are to continue working in television um you know television is my passion i studied broadcast journalism in college um, to, I mean, to one day to meet Oprah would be great. Uh, <laughs> right place at the right time, correct? Right. I would. <laughs> I mean, I would just love that if that happened one day. Um, and really to kind of just build my own media empire one day, like she did. Okay, and we're gonna make it happen. We're gonna we're yes. gonna talk something into we're existence. Into existence. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we don't. We don't. Okay. So how do you respond to any setbacks? Um, honestly, when it comes to setbacks, I just give myself grace to work through them. Um, they happen to everyone. Um, I remember there was a time when I lost my job. I was laid off for several months. Um, and that was back in what, like 2012. And so that was a really difficult time for me. And then one thing I would also say would be relying on my friends. I literally had friends who would let me come stay with them, give me support, you know? So I think really like leaning on your village and leaning into that is definitely key. And okay. So when you say leaning on your village, cause I'm from an old school where it takes a village to grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how long or how would you say the step of village of a village for you? Um, Say that one more time. How long have I been in a village? Yeah. It okay. went, and how your village came about for you being in this? Oh, yeah. So I, I feel like I have several villages. So first of all, of course, there's my family village. My family's very close. Um, I talk to my mother and my grandmother every single day. Um, my grandma's 98 years old, still bright and sharp and still giving me encouraging words, still watching my work and, you know, supporting me and championing me. Um, So that's key. Of course, I have my sister, I have my father, they're part of my village too. But then also when it comes to friends, um, I built up a village in the writing community, but also I built up a village in my friends from college. Those are like my sisters, my girls, we've been friends for such a long time now that I know if there's anything going on, like those are the people that I talk to. Those are people I really rely on and I trust their advice. Well, you've been in this industry for over a decade. What kind of advice would you give somebody that wants to be a blogger or be in a magazine? Um, honestly, I would just say consistency is key. Um, that's number one. And then also I think the key is to follow your own path, really put your blinders on and stick to what you want to do. I feel like in our business, it is very easy to get distracted, to get overwhelmed when you see other people doing things that you want to do. And really all that does is slow down your own journey because you're so focused on someone else. So for me, I would just say, really focus on yourself, put your blinders on. If you have a goal in mind, focus on that. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. What's for you is for you. And how would you put in a space or the contempt of you writing or blogging for now, Dave? What kind of creative space? 
what kind of creative space would you be in to do your blogging or your writing? Um, for me, I think it's just about staying engrossed in, um, what's happening for me that keeps me in my creative space. So, you know, I am attached to this cell phone all the time, um, cause it just helps me do my job better, helps me stay on top of like what's going on in the world and what's happening in the news. Um, and so for me, my creative space is, especially after COVID is being at home. Um, yeah. You know, mostly in silence. Girl, I love it. I love working remote. I will say that, um, you know, being mostly in science, silence, but also having like the TV on to the news so I can at least see what's happening um, and really just having like my solitude so I can really focus. Okay. That's right. So you don't use any ca um, candles when you are on the phone or anything? Well, to no. <laughs> I have, a, I have a big candle collection. You can't see it off camera. I love a candle. I do. Honestly, I have not been lighting my candles like I should because I feel like they give you that nice zen feeling to help calm you down. You have that nice like aroma like in your house. But um, yeah, candles are great. Highly mm -hmm. recommend. Definitely have a big collection of those. Good. Me too. That's, that's another part of me doing like interviews. I, I you know, have my candle links, you know, mm -hmm. music. Song yes. to like keep the vibe. Yes, 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 yes. So with that is my what or who is your big inspiration? I know you mentioned Oprah earlier. Mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, let's see. Um, I mean, of course, yes, Oprah is number one. Um, also, you know, who's an inspiration for me is my mother. My mom um, worked in media as well. I think okay. she gave me my first look into the business. She used to work in production, um, doing camera work. And I kind of feel like she instilled that in me and passed it on to me. Um, and so she inspires me because she gets it. She gets this business. She understands what I'm doing. I feel like a lot of times when you work in media, people are like, do you have a real job? She knows <laughs> I have a real job and she loves it. So I would definitely say my mom. Okay. And besides your mom, anybody else for inspiration or it was just that her as a backbone for you? Definitely her as a backbone. Um, other, you know, another big inspiration is definitely Tamron Hall. I, I love Tamron Hall's work. I remember watching her um, initially when she was on the Today Show before she went over and got her own television show. Um, I had a chance to meet her and she is just so kind and so sweet. And I love that she really humanizes her subjects. Everyone who goes to talk with her is just candid and they're comfortable. And I think that's a really great skill. So I would definitely say Tamron Hall as well. Okay. Can you explain how you would encourage your community on the field, the blogging, writing? Sure. Um, how I would encourage them mm -hmm. um, is just to remind them to just stick to it. You know, I know. Our business is especially tough. It can be very competitive. Um, but I honestly feel like the ones who see the most success are the ones who keep at it. You know, I started in this business in 2009. I've been here a long time. It's been an arduous road. Listen, but I feel like if that is your passion, then I feel like you should go chase it and go do it. Okay. So if you if you would give somebody a, a word of encouragement oh, to find their passion, how would you tell them to like go deep inside to find it? Yeah. Um, honestly, I would just tell that person to look at what they excel at, look at what really excites them. I think for a lot of us, um, we may try to adhere to other people's standards. You know, a lot of us have parents who are like, be a doctor, be a lawyer, you know, do one of the more <laughs> traditional jobs. I think for people out there, I think the key is to look within themselves and see what they really want to do. Because sure, you can get one of those jobs that someone else might encourage you to have, but you might just be miserable. So it might not even be worth it. So I would just encourage them to look at what truly excites them. Look at what they are actually truly passionate about and focus on that. Yes, yes, yes. What's next for you or what can we expect from you from the closing of the last quarter of 2023? <laughs> what we got yes. going on? You know, honestly, well, honestly, for me, I just want to continue to put myself out there um, as an individual, not just as, 
you know, Danielle Canada, who works in media, you know, I'm really working on upping my social media, showing some more lifestyle content. I want to just, you know, show more of my personality, show of my own sides. I, I wanted to do YouTube, but YouTube is just a lot for me, but maybe I will. Maybe I'll close off this year with it because I do want to make sure people see all different sides of me and don't just see, you know, my work side and they just see, you know, more of my personality and who I am. Okay, so what you was speaking of YouTube, why is, why would it be so hard? I mean, you have, <laughs> I mean, you have shit, you have awesome. I mean, you come from a good line of credits. So how yeah. was that be so hard for you? Yeah, but you know, you got to get the uh, good uh, vlogging you know. camera. You know, if you're, if the people who I feel like really excel at that, they're constantly posting their vlogs and anytime they go somewhere, they're getting the camera and they're getting the B-roll and they're getting someone to film them. And I'm just like, sometimes I'm just tired, <laughs> but I do, I do want to, I do want to possibly embark in that. Okay. So mm -hmm. I feel like you have it and you will continue to grow as the queen that you are. Um, Thank the you. last question, no problem. No problem. I, I wish you on much, much success because you have came a long way. Thank you. And it's a bigger umbrella for you. So that being said, what would you, or what kind of heartfelt message for our Scars of Survival magazine audience would you give to them? Um, I would just say, if you really feel passionate about something, pursue it, drown out all the noise, focus on doing what you wanna do. You would be surprised at the strides you can make when you really focus and you really put yourself first. You know, I think a lot of times we try to please other people. I know I'm definitely guilty of that, but take some time out for yourself and do what's best for you. Okay. And that concludes Scars of Survival Magazine with Aisha Latrice. I thank you for your time this evening. And anything else you would you like to put on the table for this last quarter, which you give <laughs> me a little sneak peek or something. I know us as magazine bloggers, podcasters, you have something that you quite put a niche to it, and you, <laughs> I'm gonna give a little teaser for something. I mean, I'm definitely gonna be doing some more hosting coming up. Um, definitely in November, actually, definitely in October too. So okay. I have some more hosting gigs coming up. So make sure you look out for that. You can follow me at I am Danny Canada if you want to see more. All right, thank you, and have a great evening, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. All right.
questions, but I wanted to um, run something by you, 